Shabbat Shalom, this is Larry Mitchell with Friends of Israel. Today we are going to start a chapter that deals with the return of the king. That's the title that J.R.R. Tolkien used in The Lord of the Rings, talking about the return of Aragorn to be, to be proclaimed king of Gondor. Now come the days of the king. In Revelation 19, 1-5, we read, After these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again they say, Hallelujah! Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen, hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him both small and great. After these things, after what things? After the judgment of Babylon mystery religion, Satan's counterfeit religion, headquartered in the city of Seven Hills, that's Revelation chapter 17, and after the judgment of Babylon the Great, the center of the one world economic system, Revelation chapter 18. I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven. I believe this is gonna be a heavenly choir, including the host of heaven, that is these angels, the Old Testament saints, the church, and the tribulation saints, saying hallelujah. Hallelujah is a Hebrew word meaning praise the Lord. Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord, our God. The heavenly choir is glorifying God. The Old Testament word for glory is kabod, which means wait. I come from the hippie generation, and I remember that we used to often say, man, that's heavy. Well, that's a concept of, of glory. It means to bring weight to God. So when we glorify God, we are, we are saying, man, God is heavy. And uh, that's what they're doing here in Revelation 19. How do we glorify God? We glorify him through our praise. The heavenly multitude praise God, concentrating on four of God's attributes. Number one is salvation. He is our savior. Number two, his glory. God is heavy. He is worthy of honor and he is all powerful, he's omnipotent. The reason they are praising him is true and righteous are his judgment. Now we are made in the image and likeness of God. Genesis 1:26. and God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. God is a just God, Deuteronomy 32, 4. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. Because we are made in the image and likeness of God, it is natural for us to demand justice. When we learn of an innocent child that has been abused by a pervert, we cry out for justice. When thieves smashed the window of my car to steal a handful of coins, I immediately went to the police, hoping the robbers would be caught and brought to justice. So when the saints in heaven witnessed the judgment of Babylon mystery religion and Babylon the Great, they praise God in divine celebration. For the religious whore has perverted the truth and has murdered the saints. Again they say hallelujah, her smoke rises up forever and ever. God is eternal, his wrath is eternal. How angry is God? He is angry as hell. Sure as hell, the lost face eternal damnation in the lake of fire. Revelation 14, nine to 11. Then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on the forehead or in his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of the torment that sends up forever and ever. They have no rest, day or night, who worship the beast in his image, and whoever receives his mark of his name. Hell was not created for you or me. Hell was not created for man. Hell was created for Satan and his demons. Matthew 25, 41. 
Then he will also say those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. God has no pleasure in sending a sinner to hell. Ezekiel 33, 11, so say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? In 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is a loving and gracious God, but if you reject his mercy and grace, you must pay the penalty for your own sin. Revelation 20 verse 15 says, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne. God who's sitting on the throne is reference to God the Father. Because we read in Revelation 5, 6, and 7 that Jesus comes and takes the scroll out of God the Father sitting on the throne. Revelation 5, 6, and 7, And I looked and behold the midst of the throne and the four living creatures in the midst of the elder stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. Amen is a Hebrew word meaning, so be it. Hallelujah means praise the Lord. The saints in heaven concur and praise God's justice. Then a voice came from heaven saying, Praise our God, all you his servants. The command to praise God is directed to his servants. The Greek word for servant is doulos, which means slave. You are either a slave to God or you're a slave to sin. God is a dictator, but he is a benevolent dictator. Matthew 11:28. Come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Sin, on the other hand, is a cruel tyrant, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And those who fear him, both small and great. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9, verse 10. Psalm 2 is apocalyptic. King David proclaims that only those who fear God will escape the wrath to come. Psalm 2, 10, 11. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. There is only one way to escape God's divine judgment, and King David gives us that way. Psalm 2, verse 12, Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. The king is coming. The return of the king will find you either embracing him as your Lord and Savior, or facing him as your divine judge. For the sake of your eternal soul, put your trust in Jesus the Messiah today. Shabbat Shalom.